Today we're going to look at Unit 9, Section 1. And we're going to be talking about logic and symbolic form. Now, mathematical logic, um, as known as symbolic logic, you know, is a subfield of mathematics. Um, and we've kind of already experienced a lot of stuff with logic. If you remember what we did with two column proofs, we were going from one step to another, logically working through, well, why is this triangle similar to this triangle? Or why is this triangle congruent to this triangle? So you're very familiar with the idea of logic already. Let's talk about symbolic form. The idea behind symbolic form really is not new to any of you. You've done it many times before. With algebra. X is a symbol. It represents some value. In this particular case, X represents 10. So what do you do? You, you substitute it and solve the problem. That's symbolic form. X was a symbol for something else. X was a symbol for the value 10. So let's look at how we plan on using symbols for this unit. We'll use the letters P, Q, R, S to represent statements. So here, P, the letter P, represents the statement, two angles are supplementary. Q represents the statement, 5 plus 7 equals 12. R represents, let's see, uh, Bob likes to fish. I don't know why, but there's our statement. Bob likes to fish. Another statement. Uh, let's do something mathematical. Let's say uh, angle A and angle B are a linear pair. They're just statements. And they're represented by letters, R and S. Let's go over a variety of symbols we're going to be using today. Not is represented by the tilde. You may not see it very clearly. It's a little wavy line. And looks like an upside down V. One thing that helps me remember which one's and is that it looks like the letter A. Well, the capital letter A. Or is it V? If then, if something, then something also known as implies, is an arrow. If and only if is a double-sided arrow, double-sided line. So these are all the symbols we're going to be looking at today. So we got two statements, P and Q. P, two angles are supplementary. Q, 5 plus 7 equals 12. We're going to be using these two same statements a number of times. So let's look at some of the ways we can use symbolic form from what we learned of our symbols. The not function we already know is represented by the tilde. The little wavy line. I'm sorry, that's not the tilde at all. That's a little wavy line. It's something different. I don't remember its name off the top of my head. Two angles are not supplementary. That's not P. So we write it as not P. Here, 5 plus 7 doesn't equal 12. That's not Q. Not Q. So we're just putting that symbol in front of the letter to represent not. Again, P and Q are the same. We're going to look at the AND function. AND is combining of two statements. This AND that. So two angles are supplementary and 5 plus 7 equals 12. P and Q. P and Q. That's the idea of the and. Again, P and Q are the same. The or function. Or is also combining two statements together. This or that. Or is represented by the symbol V. Two angles are supplementary, or 5 plus 7 is equal to 12. P or Q? P or Q. That's the OR function. 
if then. If then is a conditional statement. If this, then that. Also known as implies. Uh, P implies Q is one way to say it. Again, it's represented by the arrow. If two angles are supplementary, then 5 plus 7 equals 12. If P, then Q. P, arrow, Q. P implies Q. If and only if. It's a biconditional. It's only true if both of them are true. Madison will eat the fruit if and only... Oh, I changed my P and Q. P, Madison will eat the fruit. Q, the fruit is an apple. Madison will only eat the fruit if and only if the fruit is an apple. So she will only eat any just random uh, uh, fruit unless it's an apple. It's conditional. She'll eat the fruit if the fruit's an apple. If the fruit's an apple, she'll eat it. It's biconditional. So P, if and only if, Q. So let's convert these statements here in symbolic form. Our P is Bob goes to class. Q, Bob does well in school. Bob doesn't go to class. Not P. Bob goes to class and Bob does well in school. B, sorry, P and Q. If Bob goes to class, then Bob does well in school. P implies Q. It's an arrow. Bob doesn't do well in school, or Bob goes to class. Doesn't do well in school. That's Q, but it has a not in there. Not Q, or Bob goes to class P. Let's look at a couple other examples. P, Amanda does her homework. Q, Amanda aces her test. Amanda doesn't ace her test. That's Q with a not, not Q. Amanda aces her test if and only if she does her homework. So Q is biconditional on P. Q is biconditional if and only if P. Amanda does her homework. That's P. Now notice it's if then, so implies if she does her homework, that implies she aces her test, which is Q. Amanda does her homework, P, and she aces her test, Q. That's Unit 9, Section 1. See you next class.